one of the things that can be a bit annoying from an arranging perspective when working with virtual instruments in a DAW like Logic is that you're often working with ensemble patches, or at least I am. It's fun to play a string pad or a horn pad that sounds really full straight away, but then you end up with a MIDI region like this, where it's all in a single MIDI region and you need to split out the parts. So how would you go about this? Well, the sort of traditional method would be to copy paste it to all of the tracks. Um, so say I've got individual string tracks here and I want them to be legato lines. So I just go into each one and I delete everything that I don't need. Um, so there's a couple of key, co key commands that um, could help you with this method. This is the slower method. Um, shift up and then shift I to invert the selection and then delete what you don't need. And there's also shift down, which selects the lowest voice. Um, but all of that is a little bit cumbersome when you're working with a lot of regions. Um, this is only a three-part chord, and even then it would take me a, a little while. Um, this new method, which I've only recently discovered, and I've kind of been kicking myself that I didn't discover it earlier, is to go into the full MIDI region here, and then go to functions, and there's something called set MIDI channel to voice number, which you can assign to a key command. Um, by default, it's just blank. Um, so I've set it up to control option command V here. And what that does is assign each individual line according to the distance from the top of the chord, a separate MIDI channel. Then if you use another function, which if you go to help and then search separate, uh, then it comes up as separate MIDI events by MIDI channel. Um, but again, you can just set up a key command for that. So I've got it set up to control option command X and that immediately splits out our parts. Now there is just one final step, because these all have separate MIDI channel assignments, if I play it back now, you're actually only hearing the top voice. And the reason for that is because um, the instrument doesn't know what to do with these multiple MIDI channels because it's not a multi-channel instrument. So if you select all of them again and then just use the same key command as before, so for me it's Control Option Command V, it's the, the same one here, set MIDI channel to voice number. This time, because each individual line is in its own MIDI region, and that's all there is, each one is being assigned the value one. And so now if we play it back, um, we can hear all the voices. Now what it's done here is actually created, um, these aren't separate virtual instruments, they're all the same instruments, but on different channels. So if we want, we can just drag them down to our legato patches down here and straight away we have something hopefully passable. Now of course we'll want to probably finesse these parts a little bit, do some automation rides. Um, if you want obviously you can copy the automation data across but um, for musical reasons it's probably better to perform each note um, and maybe you want to play around with the velocities or the, the transitions and things like that. But that just kind of gets us off to a head start. And obviously, once you have your MIDI data like this, it becomes trivially easy to, for example, see what it sounds like if I double the middle part with the French horn or something. You can just drag it over to another track. So that's it. Just a quick tutorial on how to explode your MIDI chords. Uh, that's the terminology they use in some other software. So if you're curious if your DAW has a similar uh, function, then maybe try searching for separate or explode. In Sibelius, I think it's called explode. Um, so anyway, yeah, hope that was useful and see you on the next one.